Hello and welcome to this Python challenge called Hogwarts Sorting Hat Challenge. In this challenge we're going to write a Python script that is going to behave like the sorting hat in the famous books from J.K. Rowling about Harry Potter. If you've read the book you will know that the sorting hat is used at the start of the school year to decide which house each pupil belongs to. We've got a flowchart here that will help us write the algorithm for this sorting hat script. And we've got the few instructions to start with, which is just to display a message and uh, retrieve the username from the end user, so from the pupil. And then what we've got here is um, we are generating a random number between 1 and 4. And the idea is that based on the value of this randomly generated number, we are going to display which house the pupil belonged to. So there are four different houses, uh, Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw and Slytherin. And to randomly pick one of those four, we are randomly generating a number between one and four and checking the value of this number. And that's really how our script is going to work. Scroll down a bit further to the Trinket window where we can type the code. Uh, the code has already started for us. The first block on the flowchart was to display um, the title of the script, so that's done on line 4. Uh, the next block was to ask for the name of the user. To do so, we use an input. And when we use an input, we can ask the question in the brackets. So enter your name. Now, as soon as I use an input, I've got to use a variable to store what the user is going to enter. So I'm going to call my variable name and I'm going to display it here. Now the next step is uh, we're going to display a message to the, say that the sorting hat is going to start thinking about which house we belong in. So I'm going to print you belong in and for now that's pretty much it. At this stage I need to generate a random number and based on this number, I will display the house that the user belongs to. So to generate a random number, I'm going to use the random library. And you can see on line two, uh, we've done an import to import the random library, which means I can now use a new function from this library. So first I need a variable, number, equal, and then from the random library, I'm going to use the rendInt function, which is used to generate a random number between two values. So I'm going to generate a number between 1 and 4. And just for testing purpose at this stage, I'm going to print this number. Now this is not normally what I should be doing, but I'm just trying to see if my random.rendit function is working. So let's test this code. Enter your name. So I'm going to put Harry. And then you belong in. And at this stage, it's telling me number 1. If I play this code one more time, I may get another random value between 1 and 4, like 3 here. So that's not what I want to display though, so I'm going to delete this statement here. And instead, I'm going to use an if statement. If the number is 1, in that case, I'm going to display you belong to Gryffindor. And then if that's not the case, otherwise, which is else in Python, and we're going to use the word elif because I'm going to do another test. Elif number is 2. In that case, I'm going to display Hufflepuff. And I'm going to carry on like this. Elif, so otherwise, if my number is 3, then it's going to be Ravenclaw. And finally, um, I could use an else statement here. I'm going to use an elif. I think it's clearer in this case. If the number is 4, I'm going to print Slytherin. Perfect. So let's try it. I'm going to type Harry. Obviously, we all know that Harry should belong to Gryffindor, but in this case, it's going to randomly pick, so it may not actually come up with Gryffindor. Actually, here it's saying Slytherin. Okay, 
Now I'm just going to suggest a few um, ways we can improve this code further. And the same way we've used the import random library, I'm also going to import the time library. So at the start of my code, this is where I put all my import statements. I now have the time library. And the idea here is I would like to make my script act like a sorting hat. So to have a pause between um, when I type the name, I would want maybe to slip slip function in the time library for um, one second and see what happens. You see there was a delay of one second uh, before it display you belong in and same again I may want to put a delay here so it it seems like the hat is thinking um, about it and actually instead of just going to put Gryffindor I'm going to put a few more statements here like um, if you read the book you know how it works um, you are brave and courageous um, and that's why you belong to Gryffindor. So I'm going to put time.slip. And I'm going to repeat that for each house. So um, what criteria does it take to belong to Hufflepuff? So again, I'm going to have a little delay. Time.slip. I could, I could wait for longer if I wanted to. The parameter we choose here is the number of seconds we're waiting for. Now for Ravenclaw, um, Ravenclaw are creative and they love learning. And finally for Slytherin, so let's try this code, please enter your name run you belong in your creative love and love learning new skills Ravenclaw okay it doesn't make much sense here because my statements you belongings is before the statements about the qualities of the people so I'm going to just move these these two lines of code here I'm going to cut these from here and I'm going to put them after each statements of the qualities of each pupil. So I'm going to put them here. And I'm going to have to repeat that four times. Now it's really important that you keep your code indented so that all of this code here only happens if number is one. All of the code that is here only happens if number is two. Same again here. All of this code here will happen if number is three, so it needs to be indented, it needs to be aligned. Perfect, I think that should be it for now. Let's try it one final time. Tiny. You are hardworking and patient, you belong in Hufflepuff. Perfect, well that's really all I wanted to show you for today. Um, we've used the flowcharts to get started with our code and to get the logic of selecting a house by selecting a random number and then checking which number has been picked. And then we've improved our code using the time library and the sleep function to make it look like the HUD is thinking through so the output is a little bit more interesting. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. You now have access to the code from the video clip here. Um, you can try to reproduce this code yourself and you can even tweak it um, further to make it even more uh, interesting. Okay, and enjoy your coding and good luck with it.